with the two versions of Minecraft being so similar, yet so different, there can always be a comparison that can occur between the two. And with the Java edition being the main version of Minecraft, Bedrock has always been looked at as an inferior version of the game. So here are 10 features that are exclusive to Bedrock edition. Huh. On Bedrock edition you can collect wines with Silk Touch enchanted tools. And it doesn't even need to be a specific kind of a tool. As long as it has Silk Touch on it, you're good to go. It doesn't sound like a big deal until you want to build something and realize that you're completely dry on your wine supply. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. And with how low the durability on an average pair of shears is, if you're building something like a giant castle, you'd be shaving through your iron supplies in no time. And if you want to get your hands on those delicious mossy block variants, a wine farm is the way to go. Pro tip, if you want some wines in an urgency, try bone mealing a 2x2 two two of jungle saplings. These often grow with a lot of wines on them, which you can instantly collect, there is no waiting involved. And for sapling drops, I would insist fortuning the leaves with hoe. Hoes have become really quick nowadays. Huh. Now, if you want to start a brand new village in your world, you have a few different options. The most common one is abducting two villages from a nearby village, and forcing them to be the Adam and Eve of your new civilization. But if you're on Bedrock Edition, you have another option. You see, zombie spawners on Bedrock Edition have the ability to spawn zombie villagers. And these guys are fairly common, so if you have your gold supplies flowing, you can keep curing them and never have to worry about breeding another villager again. It's how I get my villagers. It's easy, it's convenient, and you also get the discounted trades. The ability to move tile entities, or in simple words, being able to move any block that has any sort of inventory to it. This includes barrels, chests, hoppers, droppers, dispensers, brewing stands, basically any block that has any sort of inventory to it, including furnaces, blast furnaces, smokers, etc. As long as you can put stuff in it and it stays in there, it's a tile entity. This feature enables us to make contraptions like this melting array right here. This design right here makes use of pistons that push furnaces around in a band-like fashion, which in Silent's words, is simple and efficient. Huh. Everyone likes Big Salmon. Humanoid ocelots love Big Salmon. Chef Ramsay loves Big Salmon. Delicious. Weird looking Plague Doctor likes Big Salmon. And for good reason too, these things live up to their name. Big Salmon are big. Amongst the three different sizes of salmon on Bedrock Edition, Big Salmon have a 25% chance of dropping up to two bones when killed by a non-looting sword. The other two sizes share the same stats, however, they can only drop up to a maximum of one bone when killed by a non-looting sword. And not only that, cod and even tropical fish share the same statistics. And again, you can increase your yield by using a looting three sword. Just look at this thing. It's even bigger than a cat. Huh. Triton killers are extremely useful contraptions. These can be used to automatically kill mobs in any sort of a mob farm. With how useful they are, these things are super easy to set up. These are literally all the resources you need to make a Triton killer. There are also different types of Trident Killers to suit different types of mob farms, but this right here is the basic standard version. These do not consume the durability of your Tridents. So you can even use an almost broken Trident without having to worry about it breaking. If your Trident is enchanted, the effects will also apply to the mobs that you kill. For example, if you have an impaling trident in your garden farm, your guardians will die quicker. Another great thing about this is if you hold a looting sword in your hand, the looting effect will also apply to the mobs, which in turn will significantly increase your troops. Besides all of that, all the mobs that are killed will also drop XP, which means you can get the most out of your mob farm while still being completely AFK. <sighs> In Bedrock Edition, leads can be used on boats. 
This is extremely useful for moving villages. Especially when you really want to save that precious iron. This way you can move two villages at once. And it also feels a little faster than rowing your boat on ground. With the help of a water bucket you can also pull these guys uphill. So there's really no need to worry about treacherous terrain. And because Minecraft characters are just hulks in disguise, you can also climb a ladder while pulling a boat with you that has a villager sitting in it. <sighs> in Bedrock Edition, when it snows, in a snowy tundra biome, the leaves will gradually chase their color. And when I say gradually, I mean it. Apparently, these things go through several stages before they turn completely snowy. Just like how copper goes through four stages before it completely oxidizes. However, the leaves are comparatively smoother in the transitions. Here's a small demonstration. The snowy leaves are also not limited to the spruce trees. If you have a different kind of a tree, or if you spawn one in using bone meal, they would behave exactly the same. And look at these jungle trees. I honestly really like these yellow fruits. What, what are these by the way? And if you want to see these yourself, you'll need to find yourself a snowy tundra. Leaves will not turn white in any other biome, even if it snows there. <sighs> it's a well-known fact that drowning a zombie would turn him into a drowned. However, on Bedrock Edition, things don't end there. You see, when you drown a zombie, the drown that spawns to replace it will have a chance of spawning while holding either of these two things. A fishing rod or a nautilus shell. Like this guy right here. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna kill all these drowned over here and then we'll see how many nautilus shells we can get. Okay, so two nautilus shells and that was not even a lot of drowned. We also got seven pieces of gold. Now you might think, why is this such a big deal? Well, for two reasons. Not only can your zombie spawner serve you as a nautilus shell farm, but also as a copper ingot farm once the 1.17 update drops. Because Mojang has announced that Drowned would drop copper ingots instead of gold in the future updates. <sighs> this one is for my fellow builder friends out there. On Bedrock Edition, slabs and stairs would let light through. which gives us a beautiful opportunity for concealing lights. I've used it pretty much everywhere in my Let's Play world. And most prominently in the custom lush caves that we built. With the use of inverted stair blocks, you can actually conceal lighting in walls too. But this does not work the same on Java Edition. If I were to place a stair block over here, in Java Edition it would completely block off the light. <sighs> Bedrock Edition villages will trade everything for one emerald. Which means a stack of stone is a stack of emeralds if you have the right villager to sell it to. You achieve this by splashing a zombie villager with a weakness potion and then feeding him a golden apple. The villager would eventually get cured and pick up a job. And once he's attached to his workstation, he will buy and sell goods for a ridiculous price. Which means the right villagers paired with the right farms can make you so rich that you can be eating emeralds for breakfast. But in the 16.100 update, Mojang removed this feature. With absolutely no reason to do so. And the worst part is, they didn't even bother to justify it. The changelog just said that they did it to match Java edition villagers. Other than that, the only logical speculation that I have is that they were too overpowered to be kept in the game. But then again, aren't a lot of Java edition features too overpowered as well? What shocked me even further is that not a lot of people stood up to speak against it. Which led me to question that am I the only one who is unhappy about the change? I can talk a lot about this change because I am absolutely shattered after this happened. It's like a massive tragedy has struck and I can't recover. But now that that's gone, let's talk about a feature that's actually exclusive. Lava cauldrons. On Petrock Edition, you can fill cauldrons with la- F-